That is lovely. Smiles. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to That Total Show. Dan here. Mick here, hello. Speaking fast because there's a lot to get through. And we, it's the time to do it. Yes, because we've just had a, the, the, the routing fun of, uh, of, of, I was going to say Gitcon. It's not Gitcon at all. <laughs> T, uh, TGU, Tome Gear University 2018, here we are. Um, and we have a rare treat. Guys from Boss uh, Europe are over. And we've got an original RE201 Space Echo. Yeah, we do. An RE20, yes. which is still available. So it's a current model, which is a you know, modern version of that. And Dimension D, which I didn't even know existed, which is the rack version, or at least preceded, I'm guessing, the Dimension C, mm -hmm. which it's commonly referred to as Dimension Chorus. Yes. But it does chorus in a really weird way. It does indeed. Let's come back to that. Okay. Let's start with spinning tape. Because we like that right off. Oh, it's so analog. Of course it is. <laughs> the good news is, I've got the original Space Echo. I will give you a thousand pounds if you can read that. It's in Japanese. That's amazing. So, um, just awesome. Anyway, right, so tape echo. Dan and I talk about echo racks all the time because we really love them. The other tape echo that was used super widely and is loved equally and has various uh, variants over the years is Roland's RE series. Interesting because it also has a full on spring reverb tank in it, it as well. It certainly does. So there's a whole bunch of the RE series. Um, was there a 101? There was a 101 and then, then I went up to the 501. Went up to what was the last? Uh, 500, 100, 101, 150, 200, 201, 301, 501. Right. 555. The 555, okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, so think of the 201, correct me if I'm wrong, this is the first one that had the spring reverb in it? Or did the 200 have the reverb in it as well? Because you the, can the read all about that. Oh, anyway, you can anyway. go to Wikipedia and read the history there, of the Rome there Space is, Echo. There is a full-on spring tank reverb yeah. in this unit as well. So if we look at the front, you've got this mode selector, right? So Which got, you, you can sort of kind of see. We've kind of got a camera on it, but um, uh, not really. So, so you'll just, we'll have you, to cut in what we can. There are four tape heads, okay? Um, the, 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 the record head, the distance from the record head and the playback heads determine generally if the tape speed is constant, the delay time. So if we go through the four um, uh, playback heads, you've got this. First one, oh. second one. No, ah, just ah. leave that, leave that, leave that. There you go. Play again, okay. There, do you want reverb as well? Uh, no, no, okay, so the okay. reverb doesn't work. Reverb so doesn't work there. Further round. Exactly. Okay, exactly. so. We've also got it set up wet dry. We've got the the the, the, long. <laughs> the, um, the echoes coming out of one side only, because we have to go stereo with the Dimension C um, and the Dimension D. Otherwise, it just we're, yeah we're running through this Mad Professor old school amp and also this Rev 
Dynamis 740. Very Dynamis. Cool. My neck doesn't bend that way. So, keep going then. That's the second delay, the, th the second delay, head, third head. Okay, now you know what's just—I can't believe I've never had one of these before right. because it's the perfect combination of the Echorex sound and the Binson sound. Right, and it's like almost you get both of them in one box. Uh, it's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. But then now I start to get to position five, and you start to be able to add the reverb to different combinations of those heads. The reverb's amazing. So get on. Awesome. So, and that, so that's this combination. Oh man, it's amazing. That is amazing. What that's so yeah, can I they can put a little off. <laughs> put the put the DNM drive on again. There's nothing like it. Right, There's just, just nothing like there. it. Okay, so we know we love that. We know we love tape echoes, and it's just the sound of ages. But they're old, they're cronky, they break down. Um, this one's in lovely fine fettel because it's owned by Roland and is kept such. It's so quiet. Yeah, wow. It's actually quieter than the hum of the amps and the aircon. That's amazing. Whereas remember the echo rack, it's like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's its Spanish name. Eww. So come on then. Modern version thereof. Okay, so let's bypass. <laughs> There's a bit of that reverb. The in the amps. Okay, yeah, yeah, a little right. bit. Right, so.
quick question. Let's go back to number four, I think, was just mm -hmm. a really nice. So repeat rate. Yep, go on. Okay, yep. And that's just from that head. So don't forget as you change the heads, that repeat rate becomes different. Range. It's just moving the play, the record and the playhead. Well, because you've got a different distance another. between different yeah, distances yeah. with the record and the playhead. So For some reason, I thought there was fixed uh, delay time, as it were. Okay, and intensity, keep going. Oh, come on, hand. <laughs> Feedback. Yep. What's yeah. also nice is you've got this input volume on here, which I guess. Can it, will it go crunchy? Try that. Or is it just, a, is it just? Seems like it's down from Unity. Mm -hmm. I guess if you've got a really hot signal going in there. Sure. Yeah, nice, nice. We should get one of these. Reverb only, let's have a listen to that. Really nice. This hand, down this hand. Sorry, sorry. Um, I have a question about the tap. Does it tap within the, the range of the rate knob, or is it? does it tap outside of that? Oh, you can see the, the LED moving. Let's it's, find it's out, probably, let's find out. Yeah, do it, you'll hit, if you could just tap it really so tap it really fast, yeah. it will gradually ramp up to that speed as well. If you, oh. hold, if you hold the tap down, that's, that's fun. Do, do a chord and hold the tap button down. because it's very cool. So all very of those, cool. um, for fans of the self-oscillation thing and... Oh, that's... Is there uh, an analog drive-through with this? Do you know? I'm not sure, I don't think so. Okay. So you've got a direct heel as well, so you've got a, a dry heel so you can get it fully wet. Right, okay, so cool. Cool. Very nice. Okay, it's... we need to spend more time yep. uh, with with both of these. We are unfortunately under the cosh, we're getting the 10 minute signal. Okay. Um, right, so dimension C and dimension D. Do you want to explain this? No. Or shall I? You go for it. Okay, um, it, referred to as dimension chorus, um, super popular Roland effect uh, from back along, heard it a lot in the 80s especially. Um, two choruses, mm -hmm. apparently split. On a normal chorus you get uh, wet and dry, yeah, you get, an, you get your dry through signal and you get your modulated signal and they're mixed. Two identical choruses, one out phase. And, it, and it, what it gives you is the, a hugely wide sound, yep. but without that movement. So if you can imagine, you've got your in phase modulation and your out of phase, out of phase modulation. So basically there's one, um, it's, it's not modulating up, modulating down, it's uh, the, like the, the push me pull you okay that was so, our Eurovision song by the way now, so what happens then that the modulation is effectively cancelled out, out yeah. but what you get is the space so it's really interesting if you I, I find sometimes it's easier to use sound than words <laughs>
helps if you turn it on. It does help you turn it on. But did you notice it instantly gets thinner? And that's the out of phase thing happening. Ah, oh, it's amazing. That's too much. What did you have there? You had, you had... DNM drive. <laughs> and just uh, no DNM drive. F major. Okay, you it? play it. Oh, okay. Play that chord. The chord? A jazz chord. <laughs> to say. I think that when you kick that in, it flips the phase. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So good. Anyway, so that's what the, the dimension C does. The dimension, dimension D. D. Moving on to the dimension C. Which I guess, yeah, comes later in pedal form, four modes. Uh, this is it with it off. <laughs> So what's cool about that, so I've been using my Free the Tone chorus these last couple years, set as a thickener. Right. And in my brain, I'm probably hearing that yeah. because it was on so many records and it was, it was such prevalent sound. So you don't get the, that huge movement. Oh, what's that sound like with some love? We, Hang on. Yeah, okay. Just such a lot of fidelity. There's some reverb on. Yeah, well, we've obviously got some. Can we get one, please? Yes. Thank you. We're going on eBay tomorrow. All right. It's incredible. That was all of the models. I've by the way. never, I've never heard one this quiet. This is the 
the best sounding one I've ever heard. Sweet. Yeah, ama just amazing. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, and dimension C, obviously, four knobs. That's it. But apparently there's a hidden knob. If you just lightly press one. No, oh, that's not. Okay. Yeah, lightly press uh, one. There's another sound to be had. chorus on I think we're done um, I yee, I'm probably gonna get like you prefer the pedal yeah I do too yeah 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 and we're getting one okay <laughs> come on here we are the first time I've heard it. So. All right. <laughs> to have sat with us, the one and only Mr. Matt Schofield. Hooray! We've oh, done two, two videos with Matt in the past. One where he came in and blew our minds in the studio with a couple of two rocks. And the second where Dan went and built you a pedal yes. board. Yeah. Yes, which is a lovely pedal board. Ah, uh, bless you. And now, because you're so wonderful, <laughs> I've got things to go home with that are even better. And have a play. Yes, yeah. new, new updates. Just never stops. So, um... We're, we're spoiled having you here. We, we are thought, at Toman Gear yeah. University 2018. This is the warmest pedal show episode it's, I've yeah, ever yeah, done. Yeah, it's yeah. like 100 degrees. It's yeah. your fingers, man. It's your fingers. They're hot. They're hot. <laughs> uh, so we had a bit of gear in here from the from the boys at Roland yesterday we were playing with. And it is this. The This is an old, very early 80s Dimension D. Yeah. And then we're having a chat about this. Yeah. Imagine our and you have a you have a... Uh, a theory that this is a bit of gear. Well, first of all, this is all an excuse for me to have a go through yes. it because I've never played through a real one. So, right. um, but yeah, I remember reading Stevie Ray, some interview with Stevie, and uh, it got mentioned. And right. then, so I was always listening for it on the records. And I think that Texas Flood has Dimension D on it. I think that's what it is on the record. Wow. Where do you think it is? Where do you think... Certainly on the it? title track. If you listen, put some headphones on, there's like a little bit of left and right separation on the mm. sound. On you the know whole that? mix or just the guitar? Yeah, on the guitar. Yeah. Um, and so when he busts into that, you know... ...thing, you know, it, uh, there's just this little spread and it, it's sort of chorus that isn't chorus, yeah. you know? And... Um, so I think it was that, because I heard him mention it, and uh, my mate Harry, um, Mad Professor, who I'm hanging out with uh, here, he has a similar theory about this whole thing. So uh, so uh, I've never heard one, though, ever. So Okay, okay, let's get to I, I just Before we get into that, I want to reflect on the Mad Professor Twimble, which has been a bit of a um, revelation mm. for Dan and I in mm. the last three or so hours. Uh, we've put one on the board here, which is yours. Yes. I so you've got it in the in the overdrive mode at the moment. Yes. Do you use the buffer? Uh, yeah, I use that a little bit as well. That's like a new thing for this is a new thing for me in the last couple of months. So, um, so I was just recording, as you know, like last week, and I ended up using the little pre-drive thing quite a bit. Oh, because wow. my my thought was you would probably like that. It's, that that's just the guitar. Yeah. We say these <laughs> we 
the way the amps are all hooked up through loads of stuff, we, 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 we think we're losing some kind of directness and, and visceral right, whatever, yeah, yeah, and that seems to put it back. It just does. a bit of a buffery thing. And I'm not a big fan of compression myself. Yeah. I try and avoid that um, as much as possible. But this does a certain kind of compression that's yeah, really, yeah. really useful. So I actually used to, the only compressor I've ever had was the Mad Professor Forest Green compressor. But on this latest record, I was doing some kind of uh, funky stuff on something, and this did the trick. It's wow. not really, well, a bit like that, it's not really chorus chorus. This isn't really compression compression, but it just puts like yeah. a little roundness around yeah. the sound and then makes your high strings thicker. We thought there was more of it in the hot. The, it, it felt more compressy in the hot. Yeah, I don't. Really, I've not really used the hot that much. Yeah. Watch, but, watch our video on. We we did Dan and I did a pick and mix on it, and you can see all of this. So that's very impressive. It's yeah, kind of yeah. cool. You can if you're on the overdrive. This is how I've been using it, and uh, so you know you got. Then you get up here, and then you hit the pre-drive, and it makes the tiny little notes up here just sound a bit more. That's so I've been standing on that thing just right at the last second. That's where I kind of uh, found it to be like its own thing. Not really had anything that did that before. So you know, because sometimes even with if you go for a, a sound that's some gain, but it's not really high gain, mm -hmm. and yeah, then you yeah, get yeah. up here on, especially on a on a Fendery type guitar, so you've got low output pickups. It's a, you know it can be feel a bit of a struggle to get the notes yeah. to go up there, and that thing just makes them just go. So it's kind of that's become the new thing there with that. So. Oh, I love that. It's great. Very cool. Right. Dimension Back D. To okay, one. so the idea with the Dimension D, uh, which then later became the Dimension, the dimension C, C uh, the idea is, the way the chorus works, you've got your original signal, which is split, and then the second signal is modulated uh, pitch-wise, so done with time, and then that is mixed back into the original signal. So you've got this like vibrato effect with the original signal on the top, gives you chorus. What the Dimension D, C does, you have two um, modulated signals, so basically split three times, two of those are modulated, but they're modulated out of phase with each other, which basically it's a, it cancels things out, and that is mixed back with the original signal. And instead of having a, a modulated signal that moves, you just get this space. Yeah, so yeah. Where, where a normal chorus you, you hear a vibrato uh, type thing mixed in with the signal. Yeah, like a, like a, like a movement, a discernible movement. Yeah. Here it's just yeah. it's size. Yeah. It's really interesting. Um, yeah, so there's a phase relationship that, hap that happens. And also, so if we go between the bypass... Can you give me clean? Yes. With or without the old buffer. Put the little pre drive job yep. in there, there we go. Is where it's at. For you right. can jam two in. Well, you got some kind of tube screamery thing in, in here somewhere, Dan, right? That's you. That's the um. That's the, the only thing that's on is the. No, I mean, can you give me oh, some yes, more, of course. like, yes, like give yes. me a... Right. We can, we can... So that's what the tube... Turn it off now for me. 
this with the same. Back on. I think I gotta get one of those because it doesn't. <laughs> no, it's like. Because it's not chorus, no, is it? but not. it just makes everything sound a bit nicer to yeah. play through. Like that. And it almost makes it clearer. Yeah. But like. The... And off again. Like puts a little thing around that. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> That's, That's cool. Good. That's you know what cool. we should do is, is, I don't know if we can even do it. Is plug the pedal one in? We can't do that, can we? Because there's no power back there. The uh, C. This one. Yeah. That's not quite as sexy from what I understand. It's, no, it's a, it's, it's more. A, it's, it's much more obvious. Yeah, it sounds more, way yeah, more yeah. effective. I saw um, twenty years ago Jesse Davy. In the hoax. The hoax, yeah, yeah. And he had one of those on the floor instead of his Leslie one night. Because I used to go see him in the pub. You know, like they living in Gloucestershire and they were from Wiltshire. And he was using one of them. And I don't know what setting he was on, but it did that slow Leslie thing yeah, really, wow. really well. That was the first time I ever saw one. I was like, what's that thing? And Jesse had one. And, uh, uh, can I just, can I hear the um, twin ball pre drive hitting the DNM drive? Yeah. <laughs> Kind of vocally midi, midi yeah. isn't it? Oh, oh, was that where, where was the dimension? That's just one, one oh. the first setting on. That's Don't turn amazing. it off though now, because that's the thing with this. Oh, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, it's like just. No, I, I don't know. Off. I don't know if you like this guitar or not, but it's an E flat. It's got some action on it. Go I'm on just, then. I'm just interested to hear. Just hit down. Um, well, this is an Ash hardtail guitar, so this sounds like this very sounds its own thing. Yeah. This is. I'm. Only because we were talking about Stevie Ray. Yeah, yeah. And it being that's in, not in, a very Stevie guitar. In that's E more. flat. Oh, hang on. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. You just can't just gloss over that. Uh, that's embarrassing. No, I? dude, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. When did that happen? 2011. Wow. In Dorsey Jazz Festival, we were on the same bill. May he and, R.I.P. Uh, I know. It was just three years ago the other day. My goodness. Is that nearly in tune? I kind of did it by ear while you were, um... And the, the bridge is floating and everything, so you're, you're going to struggle yeah, it's a bit. All but, like... uh, we've discovered that it wasn't quite any flat. It sort of kind of is now. Matt likes the um, strap bridge on the on the body, and this one is floating, so we'll... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he's, he's a professional. See, we're still on with that, right? What? Yeah, yeah. So you get used to it and you don't hear any chorus at all. You're not sure yeah, exactly. I can, I'm... Thank you. 
somewhere around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, no, that, that's always going to be a struggle. I just wanted to hear the E flat thing. What it? Yeah, it does have a. However much Far dimension out. we're going for on eBay last week, they've all just tripled and sold yeah, we've out. Yeah, we ruined so that. You now, need to, we? We, we should we'll have air this until yeah. you've got yours. Can, yeah, give yes. me a minute, right? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> That's extraordinary. I like it. Yeah. You do have to hit it hard, though. Yeah, so, you know, right. That line-level input. But if you give it some love, it's, it's amazing. Oh, there's the next question. Where do you, where do you run it? So have you... Does uh, do Two Rock still do that... Um, Tube buffered effects loop. Yeah, the, uh, the like Eli the dumbbellatory type yeah. thing. Yeah, I mean I hate all that stuff. I can't stand it. I know. I just, so just would drive me mental. You know, um, I do know a, a person that's kind of trying to get the same vibe from a from a pedal at the moment. Yeah, who happens to have two pedals on this board at the moment. So oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well done. Uh, and he's just stood outside. <laughs> he's just he's just stood outside the room at the moment, but. Um, yeah, I mean, um, uh, the only reason I ask is that if you that if you do need to give it some buffery some time love early, to yeah. make it happen, then that causes problems elsewhere, and you're really super sensitive to all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's where you have to try the little C version, right, and yeah. see if you can get close. Part of it is the two amps thing, isn't it, as well? You know, like for years. Yeah, but I, th I think I'm pretty sure that there's a mod that you could do. Right. You know, so if that's running at line level. It's probably to cut the big resistors on there on the input that you could change to, you know, make it receive a, a smaller signal. But before I knew about this, I used to, for years, I used to run two amps, and I had a DD3, mm -hmm. and but I would split the amps and then go into the DD3 100% wet out of the wet only output. So my two amps were like one was like fifteen or twenty milliseconds behind the other. Oh, nice. So it wasn't chorusing. Yeah, yeah. yeah but they yeah, just yeah, spread yeah. out. And then the other one um, that works pretty cool is the um, TC chorus. Yeah. Right. And I actually just I was messing around with that for a while with the stereo and chorus then, flanger. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and then I saw this uh, that uh, Joe Bonamass is doing it for his amps. And uh, Eric Johnson. Yeah, but the the re Eric has it cranked a bit more. But you can right. if you can use that one really subtly, right? And it just spreads it out. But this is kind of the daddy of yeah, that sound. Yeah, when yeah, you, that's, yeah. You know, because it, it doesn't have any swirl on mm. that first setting, but it just rounds everything up. If you've got those two, so given that we're dealing with uh, a flipped phase, mm -hmm. if you put those two waves in a thing and you stretched them out and looked at them, would they would they look out of phase? Yeah, they'd be exactly opposite to each other. And yet it's not phase cancelling problematically. No, because it's mixed back gets... into an original signal. Right, okay, so it's good. Because everyone gets really het up about phase and they just worry if it's like a few percent off. But what, what we're saying here is that actually being off is what creates that really cool spacey sound. Yeah, and, it's, and also because it's, you're talking about a, an analogue modulation, we're not, uh, you know, so the processing that's going on in there, there's no latency... None of that sort of stuff. It's all, you know, sort of as the good Lord intended. We're not, um, we don't have that issue with, um, you know, latency playing havoc with yeah, bangers. Yeah. This, you know, this is a different thing. And how similar do you think it is? So if, you, if you're recording and you stick a mic close on a speaker or nearish on a speaker and then you put a, another mic off in the room somewhere, for me, it, it's almost doing that kind of thing, which is yeah, just right. wider and. Yeah. Is it. Is it a similar thing or is it nothing like that? Well, if you've got the distance that takes to hit the mic and the distance that takes to hit that mic, you know, absolutely. Well, this is where you get into, like, so many years playing with organ B3 for right. me, you know, and the Leslie's, that's constant phase shifting. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, and and even, it sounds different room to room. Yeah. Because, and, yeah. And even when you record it, we just recorded it in mono on this, so we didn't stereo mic it on this thing we were just doing, but it... St there's still the phase relationship yeah. going on between the two speakers mm -hmm. in that, and that's a constant. And uh, 
Actually, I should give it to you, Dan, because it's just in my storage down the road from you. The lesson. But I've the got, lesson. No, no. Um, <gasps> the next thing I was thinking about this is, is um, uh, I've got the ch the old Chandler rack mount right. delay, the yeah. SDE or something. It's just sat in storage. Oh wow! Um, I don't Are know whether you've home? ever heard one of those, but it's got that's got like three possible outputs, so you can do stereo delays out in phase or out phase, but. Again, it's not putting the whole thing out of phase, yeah, so yeah, then you yeah, get yeah, delay. Yeah. So um, that's a really cool delay that, it's box. So, that that whole thing is really interesting. We, yeah. we, we may have a storage space for it. At the there you are, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's not being used. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> Fabulous. Uh, cool, right. Um, it's been... Look, Matt, Matt will play us out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Can I God. just say... Always an edge. Do you want your guitar back? Um, I think so, yeah. <laughs> it's... What a pleasure it is just to sit and listen to you play, honestly. Oh, I'm all over the place right now. I'm, it's a bit, I'm a bit flustered running around, so nah. just thank you. But no, no, it's, it's, it's great. So any, any excuse to get you on the show. And you know. new, new album out roughly when, Matt? Any idea? Um, did, no. Later no, no, in no. the year. This year, but later on. We had the great privilege of being in the studio while he was doing a bit of it. Oh, man. <laughs> Evan Jenkins, Johnny Henderson. Just the dream team. Yeah, you know? it, it, that's got a thing, that it band. Went. That's why we decided 15 years since we did our first one. So we were like, probably should do something again. You know, yeah. it's got a chemistry, so it's kind of cool. You know? Right, Matthew, thank you very much for visiting us. Thank you, Michael. Here in Germany. <laughs> And so, band. <laughs> back, back to feeling totally inadequate. I oh, know, that's what I want to be when I grow up, please. Okay, we'll uh, see you next week. Man, thank you. Cheers, guys. Bye. Cheers.